Hey everyone, Sir Nintendo Lot here. Here's some knowledge about them's fighting hurts I picked up from playing the Steam version of the game and watching tournaments of it. I hope these tips help you out. Number one, play the entire tutorial. I know you're eager to jump into the game and start fighting, but you need to know what the heck you're doing. Mashing buttons won't get you far. Besides, the tutorial's informative and even has some funny dialogue. I'd encourage you to go through the entire thing from beginning to end. If there's a certain step you can't pull off yet, then skip it and keep going. Number two, use your resources. If you're playing as Palm, then have a dog or two out. If you're playing as Velvet, then have an icicle or two out. If you're constantly letting your magic stay full on characters that get back automatically, then you're letting potential attacks go to waste. I wouldn't recommend sitting on three bars of super meter either. On that note, number three, don't level three super. Level 3 supers provide an amazing spectacle and deal a good amount of damage. However, most characters have much, much better options for using their super meters effectively. I won't go into the details, but I will say that you're better off sprinkling level 1 and level 2 supers throughout your match rather than gambling your entire super meter on a single attack, especially if it won't KO your opponent yet. Number four, read what your opponent does on Wake Up. In fighting games, predicting your opponent's next moves can be the key to victory. A good starting point for that is to pay attention to what your opponent does when they stand up after getting knocked down. Figure out their habits. Do they usually try to roll? Then grab or attack them. Do they try to attack, block, or punish? Do they block high? Attack their toes. Do they block low? Hit them high. A predictable foe can be punished easily if you're ready for it. In this example here, Tianwo tries to attack on nearly every wake up, so Shanti has no trouble dealing with her. Number five, block the butt. Paprika can be an overwhelming character to deal with due to her teleports, but here's the secret to blocking her level one super. Take a good look at her butt. Whichever direction it's pointing is the direction you should hold to block it. So, as you'll see here, it's pointing left. So, Arizona will hold left. The cow blocks the alpaca effectively, putting the bovine in a great position to punish. Number 6. Chill out when you're frozen. Velvet's level 2 super freezes you making all your attacks and movement take twice as long. Trying to attack in this state will set you up for a counter hit, and counter hit combos do double damage, so your best bet is to block. Up backing, that is, jumping backward while blocking, is particularly effective defense. Oh, and don't cross counter either. It'll be so slow that Velvet can punish you even if it hits. But you can still super at full speed, so if Velvet does something stupid, she can be punished in certain situations. Number 7. Don't mash buttons. You'll be easy to punish, and you'll rarely make halfway decent combos. You need to learn the inputs and timing of your combos with lots of practice. Otherwise, you'll end up being even worse at the game than I am. If you want to practice... Number 8. Use Training Mode. It lets you see the character's hurt boxes in various states and the frame-by-frame -frame hitboxes of every attack. 
You can experiment with your supers, practice the timing of your combos, and more. You'll also find sample combos there, and you can record your own to practice them. Them's Fighting Herds has the most thorough training mode I've ever seen in a fighting game, so you should use it to your advantage. Now, I'm not saying you should spend hours practicing combos before you start fighting. After all, you need to actually fight to get better at the game. Begin by seeing if you can find a few concise combos out of your favorite attacks. For example, try to figure out how to combo into and out of your super attacks. Generally speaking, normal attacks combo into special attacks, the ones with circle inputs, which can then combo into super attacks. Remember, when you're practicing a combo, the training dummy will block or tech out of your move if your inputs are too slow, but your attack won't come out at all or miss if your inputs are too fast. Like here, I need to wait for Palm's Flutter Kick to finish before pressing the next attack button. Number 9. When you see Fred, it's time to defend. After Oleander unleashes her level 2 super, she has access to all sorts of powerful attacks. Your focus should be on blocking everything, trying to drain the Fred timer. For now, only attack if Oleander whiffs an unsafe move. Number 10. Don't use launchers willy-nilly. Launchers are strong and usually cover a lot of space, but if your opponent blocks one, they can easily punish you for it. In fact, spamming any of your strong attacks won't get you far for this reason. So, launchers are best used within combos, not as raw attacks. Number 11. Know your supers. Tianwu's level 1 super is great for a hard knockdown at the end of a combo, or you can get more damage out of her level 2 if your combo game is on point. It temporarily boosts some of her moves and changes how they work, so you'll need to practice it in training mode. Arizona's level 2 can do massive damage if you combo out of it correctly, so learn how to do that. Her level 1, however, can still chip out opponents and counter well in a pinch, since it's invincible on startup. Also, if your opponent blocks one of your unsafe moves, you can immediately super to punish them if they try following up with an attack. Shanty's level 1 is a great reversal. You can get a lot of damage out of her level 2, which gives her magic once you've learned some of her run stance combos. Paprika's level 1 provides helpful hard knockdowns. Mix up your opponent by following it with either a low attack or her command grab kiss. Her level 2 gives you a picnic basket that you can pop out of right away for more damage while your opponent's stunned. Or you can use it as an opportunity to throw food and such without draining your magic. Oleander's level 1 shoots full screen and deals good damage, but it builds your opponent a lot of super meter if you use it at the end of a combo. It's nice, but Fred's so awesome at applying pressure and mix-ups that you usually want to save up for a level 2 instead. Velvet's level 1 just deals damage and pushes your opponent away. Her level 2 freezes your opponent and gives you magic so you can pelt them with projectiles. Since Velvet builds meter quickly, you should usually save for the level 2. Finally, Palm's level 1 can help you approach, and it's easy to combo out of. If you can learn to chain into and out of multiple level 1s in one combo, you can do crazy damage. 
It can also cover you if you screw up an unsafe move. But be warned that some characters, like Oleander and Velvet, can use their supers to blast right through the puppies and nail you. Her level 2 provides you Papa Dog, who can apply all sorts of pressure to your opponent, especially when combined with Mama Dog. Number 12. Remember to Tech. If you want to tech, hold one of your attack buttons while you're getting comboed. Otherwise, you might give your opponent more opportunities to smack you even if they screw up their input timing. You'll perform an air tech if you're in the air. If you'd rather ground tech, which gives you the option of tech rolling, then press a button when you smack the ground and turn blue. There's much more to learn about teching than that, but I want to make sure you don't forget about it. Number 13. Chip damage can kill you. This is especially important to keep in mind if an oleander or a velvet is showering you with projectiles. Number 14. Cross canter cautiously. A cross canter can shove attackers away, but it costs half a bar of meter, and you can't build meter again for another 5 seconds after using it, so it's not that useful. Anyway, it looks like it depletes health, but that only counts if you follow it up with an actual attack. Otherwise, the opponent will heal back up. And here's an important tidbit. In this game, if the timer runs out before somebody's toast, then the win goes to whoever has the most health. However, the cross canter potential damage doesn't actually affect who has the most health. In this example, player 2 on the right side would still win, even if the timer ran out right now. So, last second cross canters definitely need a quick follow up. Number 15. Push block if you need some space. You push block if, as you're blocking an attack, you keep holding backward and press two attack buttons, which I'd recommend assigning as macros to the L or R button in the options menu. Gain some space can help you avoid getting hit by combo after combo in a series of resets, especially if you're facing a rushdown character like Arizona, Tianwo, or Shanty. Push blocking can also nullify chip damage. You won't be able to punish unsafe moves as easily, though. Number 16. Paprika's food is a force to be reckoned with. Paprika's projectile presence may be enticing to eat since they grant health or super meter, but if she catches you eating, she can punish you with a strong attack. Also, if you're the one playing as Paprika, I'd recommend throwing some apple or broccoli if you have your opponent cornered. Since eating is done with the A button, that means your foe won't be able to use their quick A attacks while you've got them cornered. Number 17. Don't panic super. Many supers aren't invincible and they can all be blocked in some fashion. If you randomly super because you're overwhelmed, your opponent will probably just block it and punish you for it, and you'll spend a bar of meter for nothing. Number 18. Arizona's considered a good character for beginners. Without going into the details, the developers think Arizona's a great character for people new to fighting games because her inputs and play style are relatively straightforward. For instance, her headbuck moves are powerful and combo easily. In this example combo, you only need to do the corner circle forward input on the light headbuck. Pressing your heavy button next will take you straight to the next move. Personally, I think Paprika and Shanty have reasonable potential for beginners as well. Stay away from Palm if you're new though. 
using her dogs effectively is tricky. And there you have it! If you found this guide useful, please consider liking this video. I'd love to hear your thoughts and your own suggestions in the comments. If you want to watch me stink at story mode, check out my other Them's Fighting Herds videos. Or if you want to watch me be good at certain Nintendo games, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.